Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. We are back here live today with Kim Tainer, joined live on the podcast and Zoomcast, so I get to see her beautiful face. It's always so much better when you talk to someone face-to-face, whether it's virtual or in person, I think. Um, and we're excited to have her back. She's the founder of Grow and Glow, uh, excuse me, Grow and Glow Career, and uh, we're going to talk today more about the work she's doing and how she can help us. Uh, we'll start by telling you the website, Grow glowcareer.com. And Kim, would you mind just introducing yourself and tell us a little bit about what you do? Yeah, of course. I'm Kim Tainer. Thanks so much for having me again. I appreciate it. So we focus on career growth and development as a whole. So we do a little bit of everything here. So we work on resume creation, LinkedIn profile creation and editing. We help with cover letters, customized thank you notes. And then we also have a couple different uh, customized coaching packages. One is a long-term package and one is a short-term package. Perfect. And we also uh, want to let everyone know how to contact you, support at growglowcareer.com. And I mentioned the website. Is there a phone number you want to share? There is. It is 412-844-4814. So you can either call or text us on that number. Perfect. And there's an email address as well. All right. And just an overview, what are some of the things you can help someone who's uh, watching and listening here today? Sure. So we'd be happy to help with any career roadmap um, uh, strategy calls. So we do a lot of strategy calls with candidates and we also help with resume creation, LinkedIn profile creation. We help with customized cover letters And then sometimes people have a hard time uh, figuring out what their next move is in terms of getting into the jobs, the job search again. So we'd be happy to help help you figure out where to apply, where to put your resume and, and how to navigate that whole process. Perfect. And by the way, I should let you know, your notes did just pop up on that Word document, but it says it's not responding. So I'm glad we're communicating this way. <laughs> um, really, uh, we're going to talk today uh, in regards to this whole process, all the things you offer, as you just mentioned. And one of the questions that comes up, I know for you is, are cover letters really necessary? So you're going to see about 50% of employers are going to ask for that. It's not going to be asked in every application, but it is good to have it just in case you are asked for it in the application process. You don't want to get stuck and have to restart your application. So I usually tell people to have one on hand just in case, and then you're, you're ready in case you need it. And what, what's the appropriate title? Like, I remember I used to be like, to whom it may concern. Um, what, what's the proper way to address someone, especially if you don't need to know who we're talking to? Could you give us some examples or hints? <laughs> yeah, great question. So you're not always going to know who to address, and that's perfectly fine. So if you um, don't know who the person is that is going to be reviewing your application and your resume, you can simply address it as dear hiring manager. That's perfectly appropriate. You can also look that person up on LinkedIn. If you're able to find who the recruiter is at that company, you can address it to whoever that person is. So either mm-hmm. one is appropriate. Perfect. Well, what would you say um, are some important things um, that should be in the cover letter? So great question. Your cover letter should be about three paragraphs. What you want to do in the cover letter, though, is first introduce yourself. You'll want to talk about any transferable skills that might be relevant to this position and then highlight some qualifications that make you a great candidate for this role, too. And then, of course, make sure your contact information is correct. You want to make sure that that's correct so that they can easily contact you in the event that they want to interview you. Okay, perfect. And now, if you're moving or transitioning, right, um, you know, you explain all that there. But also in the cover letter, like, what if it's a total another career that you're looking for? Is that where you kind of explain, hey, why you're applying, you may not have the proper credentials for this job, but you have this, you know, how long should it be? Because I can make a cover letter for pages, and that's probably too long. (laughs) Yeah, you want to make sure it's no longer than about a page. So you can accomplish what you need to accomplish in about three paragraphs. So the cover letter is great for a lot of reasons, but really good for somebody who has gaps on their resume. Mm-hmm. Good to explain that information. 
Also really good if you are transitioning to another career, maybe you want to highlight why you're uh, fit for that role. So you can highlight some transferable skills there. And then also if you're moving to another city. So if I have candidates information and they are saying that they're currently in Philadelphia, but they're applying for a role in Pittsburgh, Mm -hmm. good place to explain all that. You can talk about how maybe you have housing or you can relocate quickly. So definitely make sure that you keep those things in mind and highlight those. And definitely customize it as best we can, as you kind of mentioned, right? Right. 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 So you'll want to make sure that you change the job title to whatever job title you're applying to. Mm -hmm. You can also change the company information. And then if you want to take it a step further, look up that company in a little bit more detail. We always recommend that you do that. Do a little bit of research, do your homework and make sure that you see what their visions are, what their mission is, maybe look up their mission statement, see if you can tie anything into your cover letter and make sure that you're telling them that you're a a good candidate in that way as well. Awesome. That's actually really interesting to do your research on them to see Ah, what to expect. You know what? It now everything is so um transparent, right? You can Google anything to find out um all the everything about a company, even reviews of employees that work there. So it's good to get an insight too. Um right. and you know, as far as uh, in the content, um, we're supposed to be talking about some accomplishments that we've had in our career, right? And we should highlight those, obviously, but without boasting. Yeah. So you can definitely talk about some accomplishments. What I would do is break your cover letter down into three sections. So your first paragraph could be your intro. You want to make sure that you highlight how you are a good fit for the role. And then your second paragraph can be more about any metrics or accomplishments. Obviously, make sure that it's relevant to the position that you're applying for. What I usually recommend here is including some bullet points. Mm -hmm. Talked previously about how important it is to have the right information in front of the recruiters. They're only going to take about 10 seconds to review your information. So if you put some bullets in there in your second paragraph, that makes it a little easier for them to skim. (laughs) Exactly. So the, the information's front and center. Just think recruiters are looking at thousands of resumes a day, oftentimes. So you want to make sure that you have that information front and center. So putting it in the form of bullets in your second paragraph is a great way to do that. And then your third paragraph can really break down um, how you're reiterating that you're a good fit for the position. You can talk about how they can contact you. And then, of course, uh, check your contact information, make sure that that is all correct. 10 seconds. That's all they look at. You spend all this time. (laughs) How long does it, you know, what is the turnaround time for someone, you know, who does need a cover letter written? How do you, you talk to them on the phone to get to know them, but how to put it together? How how long does that usually take? So the cover letter itself really doesn't take a long time. Most of the packages that we offer, offer the, the cover letter in it. If you just need a cover letter, like a standalone cover letter, Mm -hmm. we get that back to you in one to two business days, usually more like one business day. Most of the packages, we are on a three to five business day turnaround time. Right now, we're actually ahead of schedule. So we're under two business days for the first drafts. Okay, perfect. And what else did you want to share about the importance of a cover letter to our listeners? Yeah. So I would just make sure that you do your research. That's really important. Sometimes people will just plug in the title or plug in the company name and not really do thorough research. So that can really make a difference between who's calling you and who's not calling you on the recruiting side. So that's that's one tip that I can offer. Okay. And also, um, let's talk more. Fortunately, my keyboard is stuck. What is the next thing you wanted to address? Because I can't find it. <laughs> it's not moving. See here. It's stuck. Oh, we had talked about how long the cover letter should be. Uh, some other tips. I'm sorry, my computer's frozen, but I know you have the notes. I know you know what to talk about. <laughs> yep. So um, it is important to make sure that you tailor the cover letter as well. You'll want to make sure that you're not using just a blanket cover letter. The cover letters that we create are customizable. So we do 
the um, the majority of it for you, but we make it so that it is very easy to customize when you go ahead and send that out. So you want to make sure that you customize with the job title, the company name, put some specific accomplishments that are relevant to that role as well. Yeah. Okay. And also when it comes now to breaking down, uh, did you want to talk a little bit about the resume too, or just for the cover letter today, since I can't see what else is next? We can talk about the resume. Okay. Any tips on the resume? Where do you start? Again, some people give one page resumes. Some people submit five page resumes. Give us some protocols when, yeah. and the importance of, you know, talking about the jobs you've had and how many years back do you go if you have too many, if you're old like me? <laughs> of course. So um, what you want to do is keep your resume to about two pages. If you have a government position that you're applying to and you're using a government template, that's perfectly fine to have beyond the two pages because a lot of those application processes will require uh, the template to be longer. But mm -hmm. the general rule of thumb, you want to keep it to about two pages. So with that said, what you want to do is cross-reference the job description and see what your transferable skills are. So you can take a look at your, your existing resume, make a list of your transferable skills, see what's relevant, see if your job titles match up, see what skills you can incorporate in the resume that you have. Maybe there's information that's in your existing resume that should be in your existing resume. So kind of do an audit first and then see what information you can add at that point and then you will want to just double check everything, double check your grammar, double check your spelling, and then proofread at the end. Okay. And then also you mentioned making sure you concise that resume down. I remember I used to do like bullet points of like the company I work for. I'm trying to remember. I haven't had a resume in so long because you put the name of the company, then you're supposed to put like the, the city and state, but that's probably all changed now right? When you talk about the company, you put your position first or the company first, and do you still put where they're located? So you can put all of that information in there. Um, I have a couple different templates that will lay the information out a little differently. So some of them will allow you to put the, the company name first. Some of them will allow you to put the title name first, and then you can put the the city and state. That's no problem. And then after that, you want to make sure that you have your dates of employment listed. You want to do the month and the year. And then you can get into the information about the actual responsibilities that you had. So you want to make sure that you reference the job description that you're applying to and cross-reference some, some info back into your resume and make sure that there's some relevance there. All right. And uh, for someone who... Well, who has uh, maybe not much experience yet trying for that job, just got out of college. What do you put in a resume if it's you don't have any work experience? Maybe an internship or two, but how do you, you know, how do you, do you just send a cover letter? Or how does that work if someone's really new to the work community? Yeah, great question. So for somebody who would be new to the community, uh, the, the workforce, we can definitely help them as well. So what I would suggest for somebody who's a fresh grad or maybe who doesn't have a lot of work experience, keep the resume to about one page. You want to make sure that you highlight any education that you had. You can put your coursework on the resume as well. And of course, if you had some relevant internships, make sure you include that. If you worked while you were in school and maybe were simultaneously in school working at the same time, you do want to make sure that you have that on there. Even if it's not relevant to the industry that you're applying to, it just shows that you were trying to balance your time and, um, you know, maybe potentially make some money while you're in college. So you can put that on there for uh, like the time management aspect. Yeah, it's hard because, you know, a lot of kids are going to school full time, some doing sports. How do you have time for that job? And it's like you're hoping there's those startup companies, those jobs that will appreciate your hard work and um, dedication. But what about persistency? Like what if you send your resume and cover letter somewhere and you don't hear from them? What is the follow up protocol to this type? Do you send another resume, ver you know, email? in person? Do you stop in person? How, how far do you go or what's inappropriate to go that far to show up at like the boss's desk and be like, Hey, 
<laughs> I'm here. Remember me? <laughs> I sent you my resume like three times <laughs> before you get to the stalking category. <laughs> Right. Great question. So what I would recommend is connect with them on LinkedIn, mm -hmm. connect with them after you have submitted the resume and make sure that you're only applying to positions that are maybe about two weeks old as a maximum. Um, what that does is it ensures that the job posting is a little bit more fresh and there is a better chance that that's open still rather than seeing a job that maybe has been posted three to four months ago, the likelihood of that being open or the likelihood of a lot of candidates being in play is, is probably um, a little higher. Uh, you would, you would likely have a lot of competition with something like that. So I would recommend taking a first step by um, contacting them on LinkedIn, trying to connect and then see if you get a response that way. And we're happy to help with, with uh, creating a, a specific strategy in our strategy calls as well. Oh, perfect. And how does that work? If someone does want to reach out, what do you, uh, is there an initial, is there a free charge, a free discovery call? And then from there, how does the, the process and the packages work? Yeah. So we have a free discovery call available. So it's right on our website. It's the top menu bar of the website. You would just want to click on schedule a call. So after that, you would schedule a call on our calendar. And um, that is a free 15 minute call. It's either done via Zoom or by phone. So it's your preference. And then from there, we would discuss different services that might be relevant to what you're doing or if you have questions about what next steps to take in your job search, happy to help you navigate that. And then we would we would talk about um, what to do in the future. Got it. And also now today's day and age, everyone is on this LinkedIn. You can discuss the importance of this platform about finding a job, getting a job. And there's also language, computer language that we don't know. You help people with that. Could you share the LinkedIn um, benefits and of course, how you can help someone virtually set that up? Yeah, of course. So we help a lot of people with the resume cover letter in LinkedIn. It's one of our most popular packages. So LinkedIn is very important for a lot of reasons. One of them, of course, is that you can uh, find a new job through LinkedIn. So a lot of recruiters will be on LinkedIn looking for candidates. So uh, what we help with would be the entire profile creation or editing that content for you. We can update the profile for you as well. That content is optimized, keyword optimized towards the specific jobs that you would want to target. And then we also offer three different banner options for the top of the profile as well. So the banner would go behind your profile picture. And those are customized to your exact industry or field that you're targeting. And then in terms of other important reasons that you should be on LinkedIn, there are opportunities for networking, which is a great reason to be on LinkedIn. Um, just being active in terms of posting, that can help you get noticed, even if you're not really searching for a position too. So if you're passively searching, you never know. If you're, if you're posting something that is resonating with someone else, maybe a hiring manager contacts you about your dream job and you didn't even know it was out there. So doing a post from time to time is, is good. Make sure you, that you stay consistent with that. There are a lot of groups on LinkedIn that you can also join. So yeah. I would recommend looking into the different groups that are available. A lot of them are industry specific specific or even job title specific. Yep. So I would make sure that that you look into um, some groups to to see if you can network with individuals there. And then also uh, the keyword, what do you call the keyword search? How do you like tag yourself? And is what is the name of that? The keyword optimization. Thank you. Keyword optimization. That's a new term. You taught me that a few weeks ago. Could you share what that is for old timers like myself? Of course. So keyword optimization, that's something that we do as part of the, the resume and cover letter and LinkedIn process. So I mentioned how the recruiters that are reviewing your resume, they're taking about 10 seconds to look at it. So with that in mind, what we want to do is reverse engineer 
we want to make sure that the content that's important to recruiters is on your resume. So that the, the way that we do that would be to analyze the description or descriptions that are interesting to you, things that you would potentially apply for. And then we do a keyword optimization, analyze those keywords, make sure that the content carries over into your resume and other documents. And then that will help you in your job search. So that will help you rank higher in a search result the goal is to rank on okay. maybe page one or two of a search result as opposed as opposed to page 30. So the likelihood of a recruiter sitting there and scrolling to page 30 on a database, a resume database is probably pretty slim. So we want to make sure that you're ranking higher. And a good way to do that would be to make sure that your content is relevant to the jobs yep. that you're applying to. So we kind of work backwards there. Beautiful. Thank you so much. We appreciate this. Um, still got two more minutes left in your show. How did you want to kind of some, um, I guess, sum up for today and leave off with your uh, viewers and listeners about the work you do and why they should contact you? Yeah, I mean, definitely. I like you. I would say because she's good. She's thorough. Look at her testimonials. But <laughs> Tell us why. Thank you. So I, I think the the basis of what we do and what I do is that I just love to help people. I love to to talk people through what to do and strategize. And we have a lot of people that will come back and say, hey, I wasn't getting any callbacks on my, my resume. I wasn't getting any interviews until you redid it. So I love hearing things like that. Yeah, uh, Love helping people get into new careers. So it's what I do every day. So it's, it's really a passion of mine. Um, but we have a lot of different services that are are good for any stage of your job search. So we meet you kind of where you are. Um, we have a lot of different packages on our website that don't um, require you to get services that you may not need. So everything's kind of a la carte, which is nice too. So you can kind of pick and choose. We have a lot of people that will do the resume cover letter in LinkedIn and then come back and say, hey, I have no idea what to do with this resume. What do I do with it? No. A strategy call is a good a good thing to do at that point because I can walk them through that process. Right. So. And Kim Tainer is her name. It's growglowcareer.com. Did you want to share any social media pages, phone number, anything else before we go? Yeah, of course. So our email address is support at growglowcareer.com. The phone number is 412-844-4814. And then we're also on Instagram and Facebook. We have a LinkedIn page as well. So feel free to follow us. Perfect. Thank you so much. Pleasure Thank having you. you here. Good to see you face to face. Have a fantastic day and an even better week. And looking forward to talking more. Grow and Glow Career. By the way, how did you get that name of the, of the company? Who, who helped you develop that? Uh, just liked it. I, li I like the name Glow. I felt yeah. like it was something. And growing and glowing yeah. and Perfect. Awesome. I didn't know if there's a story behind that. So it just came up to you. It just came to you one day. Yep. Just came to me. All right. Sounds good. Thanks again. And uh, Kim Glow Tanner. Um, that's your middle name now. <laughs> <laughs> what? What is your middle name, by the way? It's Glow. Seriously? I'm just saying. Oh, oh, my God. You got me. I'm like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> Thank you, Kim. Oh, I'm out of breath. That was a good one. Thank you. Have a good day. Thanks for playing along and getting me back. <laughs> Bye. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. 
Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage-free, fully adaptive, handicapped accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's going to be okay.